Welcome. This video is about constant rate of change, or another way, steady rate of change. So before we do that, let's look at our number routine. Here we are given different multiple representation of the same thing. We're given a graph, a table, and then we'll have to find an equation from it. So looking at this graph, what I notice? Well, I noticed that there's a point right here at 0, 0. Mm. I believe this says 2, 1 half. This one shows 4, 1. Um, I think it says 6 and 1.5 or 1 and a half. Here I see negative 4, 1. So what is the relationship between x and y? Is it additive or is it multiplicative? Well, it can't be additive because if it's additive, what would you add to 0 to get 0? So I think it is multiplicative. So what do I multiply 0 to get 0? What do I multiply 2 to get 1 half? What do I multiply 4? to get 1. I'm going to multiply 6 to get 1 and a half, negative 4. Let me, you know, I'm going to go to this 4. I like, I'd rather work with some whole numbers. Hmm. I believe it is divided by 4. But isn't divide by 4 the same thing as saying the reciprocal of times 1 fourth? It is, because if you think about it, 0 times 1 fourth is 0. 2 times 1 fourth. What's two groups of 1 fourth? 1 half. It was 2 fourth or 1 half. 6 times 1 fourth is 6 fourth or 3 halves or 1 and a half. So it is. So the equation is y equal. I multiply the x by 1 half. 1 fourth x. I can also say y equal x divided by 4, if that is another way of saying it. So we could say it's divided by 4 or times 1 fourth, because dividing 4 is like finding a fourth of something. So that is the relationship between x and y. I am multiplying by a fourth. So um, here's a video. Let me press play one second. Your parents know this movie. This is what we grew up on. Uh, you know, this was one of them. I think it's one of the more all-time uh, money-making movie. Do you know what it is? It is called Titanic. So, uh, what has Titanic to do with math? Well, the Titanic struck an iceberg at 11:40 p.m. on April 12, 1912. At 2:40 a.m., it sank, which is pretty much in three hours. It sank, which is really sad because thousands of people did die from this. The Titanic held 46,326 gross tons. So if you look at this, uh, you can see the Titanic is in blue right here. It's huge. This is a person. This is a car. This is a bus. This is an Airbus, which is a very large plane. Um, and so it's, I've actually seen the Queen Mary uh, 2 before. Um, I've seen it in Long Point and also New York City. It's a huge boat. Um, if the ship gets filled with 30,884 gross tons of water in two hours and 46,326 gross tons of water in three hours, what is the unit rate? Is the unit rate steady or constant? What was the constant rate of change in gross tons of water per hour? So we're going to go fill out this table. So in two hours, it filled 30,884. In three hours, it filled 46,326. So how much did it fill 
can gross tons in one hour. Let's think. 30,884. I'm going to divide this. 2 goes in 30, uh, 15 times. 2 goes in 8, 4 times. 2 goes in 8, 4 times. 2 goes in 4, 2 times. So 15,442. What about this one? 46,326 divided by 3. 3 going to 46, 15 times. 3 going 13, uh, 4 times. 4 times and 2 times. Hey! So every hour is filling with 15,442 gross tons of water. So is the unit rate steady or constant? Yes, it is. It is steady or constant. That means it's filling up at the same rate, the same amount of water each hour. So what was the constant rate of change in gross tons of water per hour? It is 15,442 gross tons of water per hour. So the constant rate of change is, a, think of it as steady rate of change. It's, it's a steady change per unit. For example, if you're at a grocery store and you see a box of crackers, and a box of crackers costs $3 for one box of cracker, crack, cracker. But if you buy four boxes, it should be $12 because it's a constant rate. It's the same steady rate for every box of cracker. Another example, imagine a car is driving 60 miles per hour each hour. So if it's constant rate of change or a steady rate, that means it's driving at the same pace, same rate every hour. So in two hours, 120. In three hours, 180. In four hours, 240. So it's every hour it is driving 60 miles per hour. So today we're going to be finding the constant rate of change. Sometimes it won't be constant. For example, a runner. Think of a, of a runner. When a person starts running from a starting point, they're running at a slower speed. But then it speeds up as they get faster and faster. So it is not a constant rate of change because it starts off slow and then it increases faster and faster. So each student will need 30 toothpicks. You will create a sequence of triangles following the pattern provided by the teacher. So side length one, side length two, side length three, side length four. So side length one, I use three number of two picks. It should say number two picks. Um, I need to change that. Uh, and, and so side length two. So I need to have a side length of two or a triangle. So it needs six toothpicks. Side length three. So that's one side of triangle, one side of triangle, one side of triangle. So I need nine toothpicks. Side length of four. So I need four. I need 12 toothpicks. Use the table below to calculate the dependent quantities from the corresponding independent quantity. So the number of toothpicks is the dependent. It depends or what the side link is. When I tell you the side link, you're able to find the number of toothpicks you need. Writing equations show the relationship between S and T. So let's see, what is the relationship? Is it additive or multiplicative? Um, I think it's times three, times three, times three, times three. So it's times three. If you're multiplying three by S, so it's T equal three S. Use the coordinate plane to graph the data from the table. Be sure to use the x and y axis. Be sure to label it x and y. So side length of triangle, side length of triangle. And I believe this says number of toothpicks. So if I have a side length of one, I need three toothpicks. If I have side length of two, I need six toothpicks. If I have sine length of 3, I need 9 toothpicks. If I have sine length of 4, I need 12 toothpicks. So the points on the graph be discrete, not connected, or be continuous connected. Um, I would say discrete or not connected because we're 
we're finding the, if you look at it, we're finding the side length of what one is, two, three. These are integers or whole numbers. We're not finding the side length of a half of a triangle. So uh, for this one, um, uh, so a rate of change is a rate that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another quantity. So rate of change can be written as change of y over change of x. If the rate of change is the same for several quantity, it's called a constant rate of change. So let's look at the table. How do you determine the constant rate of change from a table? So if you look at this table, for every side link, it goes up by how many toothpicks? It goes up by three. It goes up by three. It goes up by three. So I can see that the constant rate of change is three toothpicks per is three toothpicks per side length. How do you determine the constant rate of change from a graph? Well, if I look at this graph, it goes up three for every side length also. So, and how do you determine the constant rate of change from an equation? In this equation, you are multiplying each side length by three. So, is it a constant rate of change? Yes, because it is, it's a steady rate. It's steadily changing our constant change of three toothpicks for every side length. So it's changing the same steady amount. So in our last activity, we're going to do a real world example. On July 21st, 2014, Twitter reported the number of tweets sent during various time interviews over the course of one day. If the number of tweets sent is the same for each second of the day, use the data to complete the table and graph. Here's a, um, a uh, trivia question. Which celebrity has the most followers? Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez, Lucy Liu, or Katy Perry? I know you want to say Lucy Liu because she tweets about me, but of course it is, it's actually Katy Perry. Um, so in here, every five seconds, there are 36,815 tweets. Every 10 seconds, there's 73,630 tweets. In 15 seconds, how many tweets would that be? Well, let's use this calculator. So if it's 73,630, and five minutes more, let me add five more, add five more seconds to that, or which is 36,000, let's see, 73,630 plus 36,815 equal, so that's 110,445 tweets. So in 20 seconds, there are 140. There's 147,260 tweets. Five seconds later, there's another 36,815. That would be 184,075. Five seconds later, 36,815. It would be 200, 220,890 tweets. So in, let's clear it, in 40 seconds, there are 294,520 tweets. Five seconds later, 36,815 more tweets. So that's 331,335. Five seconds later, so there's another 36,815 tweets. So that is three, oh goodness gracious, I need to freeze that up. Three. <clears throat> 368,150. Let's graph this now. So in five seconds, there's about 36,000. So I think this is scaling up by 25,000. 25, so 36,000 would be somewhere right here. 73,000 would be somewhere here. 15 seconds would be somewhere... Uh, 110,000 would be somewhere right here. Uh, 20 seconds would be 147. That would be somewhere right here. Uh, 25 seconds would be 184. That's 175, so it would be somewhere right here. 30 seconds is 220. That would be somewhere right here. 35 seconds is 257. That's 250 right here, so a little more. 40 seconds is 294. That's pretty much like 
below, less than 300,000. 45 seconds, 331. It's a little between right here, 25 and 50. Uh, 368 would be like right here. And 55 seconds is about 400,000, but not quite 400,000. So it goes right here. So would this be connected or not? It would be connected because we do tweet. Every second, there's someone tweeting, tweeting, not like every five second people tweet. So let me connect this. So the question is, how does the number of tweets change with respect to a change in time? And let's see. There are 36,815 tweets for every five seconds. Find the constant rate of change for tweets per second. So if it's 36,815 every second divided by 5 is 7. 5 goes in 18 three times. And just that. 5 goes in 31 six times. 5 goes in 15 three times. So 7,363 tweets per second. So it is a constant rate of change because it is changing. Every second it goes up by 7,000. And if we look at our graph, you will be able to tell that it is going up the same amount of tweets every second. So it's very steady. And our last question is this. At 11 a.m., the water cooler was 30 inches. At 5 p.m., the water cooler was 12 inches. Oh no, it is leaking. Determine a constant rate of change for the water level per hour. So how many hours is that from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m.? Well, if you have a clock, 11 a.m. is here, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 6 hours. And it changed by, it was 30 inches of water, now it's only 12 inches. So it dropped by 18 inches. So determine a constant rate of change. That means it is changing, if I simplify this, 3 inches one hour. I divide both numbers by 6. That means it is dropping 3 inches every hour. So steadily leaking 3 inches every hour. So you could say negative 3 inches one hour, or you can write down it is leaking 3 inches per hour. All right, so constant rate of change is the same number. It's like think of it as like it's almost like unit rate, pretty much. Um, think of it as it's the same steady change that's happening every unit, and that's constant rate of change.